Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Bench Proof. It is October, which means that it's pumpkin spice everything everywhere you look. This show is no exception. Uh, today we're going to be making a pumpkin spice walnut uh, bread. It's incredibly delicious. It's, it's good for uh, breakfast or good for like an after dinner, you know, have, sitting around having coffee, have a little slice of this. It's a little bit sweet. But not, uh, you know, we're not like a sickeningly sweet like a lot of desserts nowadays seem to be for some reason. Uh, first thing that you want to do with this is you want to preset your oven to 350 degrees. This is a chemically leavened bread, which means that once we get it all mixed in, the best thing for it is to go immediately into a hot oven. So go ahead and preset your oven to 350. That way, as you're combining the ingredients, it's got time to one, get to that temperature and then stay at that temperature for a little bit before you put anything into it. That way, you know, the entire mass of the oven has time to come up to that 350, not just the air inside. Uh, for this, you're gonna need uh, just a few ingredients, nothing too crazy. Uh, you're gonna need uh, dark brown sugar, eggs, room temperature butter, flour, cinnamon, nutmeg, and salt. Also, you're gonna need pumpkin. You can use either canned or uh, fresh pumpkin for this. I personally, I'm using canned today. Uh, I went to the grocery store, wasn't able to find a cooking pumpkin. Uh, these are not the same ones that you carve your jack-o'-lanterns out of. They're smaller. Uh, they have a much higher sugar content than the large globe pumpkins do. I couldn't find any in my store and I've got two jobs. So I just do these videos on my off days. So I didn't really have time to wait on them to come out with one. If you do happen to find one, uh, though, pick it up, you know, go ahead and buy it if you want to do it for this recipe. Cut it in half. Like I said, they're only about this big, so, you know, it's not too hard. Cut it in half, take all the seeds out, and then uh, put olive oil or a vegetable oil on there, rub it down really well, salt and pepper it, and then put it on a baking sheet. Bake it at 350 degrees in your oven for about an hour to an hour and a half until the flesh becomes soft. Then scoop out the pulp and then substitute the, uh, you know, substitute the freshly baked pumpkin that you just did for the canned pumpkin that I'm gonna use today. You're gonna need one and three quarter cups, either canned or fresh, completely up to you. If you can find it, use the fresh, it's gonna have a little bit better flavor to it. If not, the canned pumpkin is actually pretty good these days. It's gonna taste perfectly fine with the canned pumpkin as well. So in, in my bowl here, I have one and a half cups of firmly packed brown sugar. That is important if you just scoop out uh, the brown sugar and put it in, you're not gonna have as much. One and a half cups firmly packed is really more, you know, closer to almost two cups if you were just scooping it out. So don't forget, firmly packed brown sugar. I'm using dark brown sugar. You can use uh, light brown sugar if you want to. Completely up to you, depends on, you know, your taste. Also have here three eggs, which are room temperature. I'm just gonna beat them just a little bit, just to get them loosened up. Not too much, you know, not making scrambled eggs here, just a little bit to get the proteins, the proteins loosened up. Dump those onto my sugar. I'm also gonna put in um, one whole stick of room temperature butter. I've cut it up into roughly tablespoons, just cause it, it, it incorporates easier in smaller pieces. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, you can either do this in a, in a big stand mixer if you'd like to, I use a hand mixer and we're just gonna get this uh, very well incorporated here. Now that's mixed all together, we're gonna put in our one and three quarter cups a pumpkin, like I said, either canned or fresh, completely up to you for this recipe. And then we're gonna mix this all together as well. All right, now that that's all mixed up, we're going to set it to the side real quick and bring in our dry ingredients. In this bowl, I have four, four cups of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one half teaspoon of uh, grated nutmeg, and one half teaspoon of salt. And I'm just gonna whisk these together real quick just to get them mixed up. All 
All right, now those are all incorporated with each other. We're gonna bring our wet ingredients back and we're gonna slowly start to add the dry ingredients to this. So I've got a one half cup measuring cup here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add three cups of our dry, of our dry ingredient mixture into the pumpkin mixture that we just created. That's two cups, two and a half, and three. And then just stir that together. This is just like any other baked good. We have four cups of mixture ready to go, uh, but we start off with less than what we think that we're gonna need, because some days, you know, it, it takes more flour, some days it takes less flour, depending on the humidity, the temperature of the room, all kinds of different factors go into baked goods. So we have four cups ready, but we're gonna start with three, see where that puts us. After we get this incorporated, it's gonna take a little while. And then we'll go on with the next step. All right, I have my three cups of flour mixed into this. It's still very loose. Uh, we want this to tighten up a little bit. You're not looking for it to be like a, a yeast bread, you know, type of consistency or anything like that, but you do want it stiffer than what it is now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an additional half to three quarters of a cup and see where that puts us now. This is actually looking pretty good. I think I might add another quarter cup of our dry mixture just to be on the safe side, tighten it up just a little bit more, but we're, we're getting pretty close to where we need to be. Just mix this in real quick. You see how it's starting to pull away from the bowl a little bit more while I, while I stir? That's kind of what we're looking for, is making more of a dough than a batter. But not, like I said, not quite to the consistency that you would look for for like a, uh, like a yeast bread dough or anything like that. So this actually looks pretty good. It's fairly tight, but still very sticky. But this is as far as we need it to go for this particular bread. The next ingredient that we're gonna add is walnuts. I just got a bag of already chopped walnuts. Use anywhere from a cup to two cups, depending on how much you like walnuts and how many you want in your bread. I like them. So I put almost about a cup and a half in there. Some people put you know, an entire two cups. It won't throw off your recipe. You know, it won't change the baking times or anything like that. It's really just how many nuts you want in your bread. That's the only difference for that entire measurement. If you're allergic to nuts, don't put them in. Perfectly fine. This will still be a very good bread. Uh, it's just that added little bit of fall flavor in there. That's really all the walnuts do. Add a little bit of texture and a little bit more fall flavor in there. So we're going to set this to the side and bring our two prepped baking dishes. You're going to want to use two 8x4, two medium loaf pans. I actually use 5x9 because that's the only size that I could find in glass. And doing this for the camera and doing the time lapse and things, I think it looks better in glass so you can see you know, the entire rise price process, see where your bread needs to be at different points of the baking process. So I use five by nines, which means that they won't rise and be quite as big of loaves as you will at home when you use eight by fours. That's perfectly fine for me. I'm making these to eat. I'm not looking for presentation purposes, you know, like I'm not gonna take this to like a Thanksgiving dinner or anything like that, which would be a good idea though. Take this for Thanksgiving. Like I said, it's a great after dinner, you know, coffee bread just to sit around and, uh, you know, just have fun, conversate, talk to your family while you're having your Thanksgiving. But use two 8x4 loaf pans, and I've got them sprayed down with uh, the Baker's spray that I was talking about, the one with the blue cap. It's got the flour already in there. You can also put buttered wax paper in your loaf pans, and then uh, that's how you would prep them for that. So we're going to split the mixture evenly between the two loaf pans or as evenly as you can get. Okay. Trade out my spoon for a spatula here. Get all of this goodness off of the bowl.
and then just kind of work it into the corners a little bit. It doesn't need to be incredibly level or smooth on the top. Just trying to get into a rough rectangle-y shape. Like I said, it's a, it's a very sticky dough, so you're not going to be able to work with it a whole bunch. But just kind of try and smooth it out a little bit, maybe take it, jiggle it around, and bang it down on your table or whatever work surface to kind of get some air bubbles out and help smooth it down. I'll do that after I turn the camera off so I don't make y'all go deaf. Um, but now that they're prepped, get them into the oven, lickety split. Like I said, they're chemically leavened breads. That, uh, that baking powder in there is what's going to give them their rise. So you don't want them just to sit around because you'll lose that rising potential. So into a 350 degree oven and they're going to bake for about an hour. They're going to, uh, they're going to turn a deep brown color. I'd say test them right about 50 minutes with the toothpick and I'll show you how to do that later on. If they're not done, stick them in for about another five to 10 minutes. That should finish it up to get to the hour, uh, to get to the hour mark. But I'd say test them at 50 because I'd rather test them put them back in if they're not done, then wait too long and then have overcooked bread. So in a 350 degree oven for 50 minutes and then I'll be back at the end to show you what the finished bread looks like and how to test for doneness. All right, welcome back. We've got our bread out of the oven. Uh, what we're gonna do to test it is the toothpick test, just like almost every other episode that we've done. But if you haven't seen it, this is your first episode. First of all, welcome. Secondly, stick a toothpick right down the middle, pull it out, it comes out clean like that, your bread is done. If it still has batter clinging to it and things like that, you might wanna let it go for an additional five to 10 minutes. I did check mine at the 50 minutes. It needed that additional 10 minutes to get to a full hour of baking. So I left it in there, uh, but it's completely done now. As you can tell, I didn't do the best job of making sure that my batter was uh, even, evenly split between the two. Not that big of a deal. For me, if you want to, you can easily you know, weigh it out if you want to be precise. If you're giving these as like a gift or something, you want to make sure everybody gets the same amount. That's perfectly fine. Me, this will probably only last for a couple of days before me, my brother, and my uh, other roommate just devour it. So I'm not super worried about it being incredibly even. Um, the whole house smells fantastic though. I sincerely do hope that you make this bread. It smells great. It tastes great. And like I said, take it, you know, if you're going home to visit your family for Thanksgiving or if you're having family come to you. It's an easy bread. It takes about an hour and a half from start to finish. It'll make your whole house smell great to welcome your guests into your home. And if you're going to someone else's home, it's a great, you know, easy gift. Wrap it up in uh, saran wrap and then tin foil once it cools completely. Speaking of, let it cool in the pans for about five to 10 minutes and then deep pan and then put it on a cooling rack, let it come to room temperature. Once it does that, then wrap it in the saran wrap and the aluminum foil, take it to wherever you're going. It's delicious, like I said, it's a great fall flavor or keep it at the house for yourself, enjoy it for breakfast while you're sipping you know, your other pumpkin spiced flavored things. Uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But that's pumpkin spice walnut bread. I really do hope that you enjoyed this episode. Hope that you make this bread and enjoy it as well. If you do, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear some feedback. If you've got a recipe that you'd like to see me, you know, bake, maybe, you know, you've seen it before in the past, but you'd like a video step-by-step uh, -step walkthrough like I do on these episodes, let me know that as well. Send me a comment below. Any kind of feedback, I would love to hear it. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe. I put out videos as often as I can. Like I said earlier, I've got two jobs. I just really enjoy doing these. So I do them on my days off. So I don't put out videos every Wednesday or anything like that. It's just whenever I get uh, time to do it. So I can't promise you that there's going to be videos at certain increments. 
but I put out as many as I can as you know as often as I can. Um, I've got fly tying videos that go up and I've got baking videos that go up. I alternate between how much time I have in the day to film what. Obviously these take a little bit longer to do than the fly tying videos. But hit the subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. Hit the like button, let me know that you enjoy what I do, you enjoy watching bench proof and things like that. Check out my channel for other how-to videos and instructional, you know, step-by-step uh, -step videos. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Have fun baking.